One question visitors often ask is, what is that big tall bird out in the pond? While there are many different birds that could fit that description, I'm going to highlight three common birds that visitors confuse for each other at the preserve. The great blue heron, the great white egret, and the sandhill crane. Now, egrets are essentially a type of heron. Egrets and herons are in the same family, Ardeidae. In this family also includes bitterns. Now, a sandhill crane, however, is not a part of the same family as egrets and herons. It is a completely different type of bird. It is in the family Gruidae. There are 15 different species of birds in this family. So why are all three of them commonly mistaken for each other? Well, from far away, they may just seem like large, tall birds with long necks and long legs. However, when you take a look closer or see them wading or flying, you'll likely notice those small differences. Now let's get into those differences. Comparing these birds side by side is a great way to notice all the differences. Let's start with the shape of the birds. All three of these birds are wading birds, meaning they'll walk slowly through shallow waters to hunt or forage for food. Another common factor is that they all have long legs and long beaks, helping them wade and hunt. But a big difference is in the shape of their neck. Both the great white egret and great blue heron create an S curve with their neck. When they fly, their heads will usually be tucked in. As for size, a great white egret tends to be slightly smaller than that of the great blue heron. For the sandhill crane, their necks make a slighter S curve when wading or foraging, but they also keep them straight more often than the great egret and the great blue heron. When they fly, their necks stay straight, giving them more of that crane shape. The sandhill crane is also closer in height to the great blue heron, but it is often bulkier in size. Now let's move on to the color of the bird's feathers, or plumage. The great white egret has a bright white plumage. These beautiful feathers were once so desirable for use in hats and other fashion items that the great white egret nearly went extinct. Thankfully, action was taken to help reverse this course, and now their numbers are stable. During the breeding season, you may see a neon green patch on the face of the great white egret, and you may notice their feathers feathering out on their backsides for a showy display. Moving on to the great blue heron, it gets the blue in its name because it has a grayish blue color to its feathers. They also have a distinct black strip over their eye that often feathers off the back of their head. Now in other parts of the country, such as Florida, you may find an all-white version called the great white heron. However, you will not find this species at Kasunas River Preserve. Now, the sandhill crane has a gray body. This can be a reason why some get the great blue heron and sandhill crane confused. However, the bright crimson colored cap on their head truly sets them apart from both the great white egret and the great blue heron. Now that we've got some of the coloring of their plumage settled, let's move on to their beaks and legs. The great white egret has an all yellow beak that's thin and dagger-like. Its legs and feet are all black. Not to be confused with the snowy egret, who is much smaller and has yellow feet. The great blue heron has an orangish yellow beak that may have some mixed colors in it where it meets the head, especially in the juveniles. Though dagger-like, similar to the great white egret, the great blue heron tends to have a heavier looking beak. Its legs are lighter in color on the upper part and become darker closer to their feet, giving their legs more of a two-toned color. As for the sandhill crane, they have a long dark beak which nicely contrasts the red cap on their heads. Their legs are also long and black, but may be lighter in color if a juvenile. 
Now, aside from shape, size, and color, another way to identify and differentiate these birds is to understand the area you are looking in. At the preserve, you will not find sandhill cranes in the spring or summer. They arrive at the preserve in the fall and stay through late winter. Understanding what birds are in the area can help you figure out which bird you may be looking at, especially if it looks similar to other birds. Binoculars are also helpful, as they can give you that closer look which allows you to see those smaller differences and distinct characteristics of the bird you're looking at.